So this season we're going to be visiting all 20 Premier League stadiums. So far we've been to Anfield. I suppose it ain't too bad. Goodison Park. Molyneux. Molyneux. It's impressive. Villa Park. I've always loved Villa Park. That's nothing new. And of course, Old Trafford. Hello, you know, and today... Relax, don't do it. I've got to. Relax. I'm relaxed, I am. Don't do it. I've got to, it's time. After the disaster that was the Manchester Derby a few weeks back, when I was sat there in the Stretford end under a leaky ass roof, having to listen to Manchester City fans chant. It got me thinking, how much better is the home of the current treble winners, the Etihad Stadium? How much better is it compared to Old Trafford? Well, ladies and gents, there's obviously only one way to find out. Subscribe, and let's bloody do this. Let's go. So, back again. Today, obviously, we're off for an Etihad Stadium tour. And if you want to get in the comments below and let me know how I don't sound like I'm from Manchester, this is your time. Get commenting down below. I'm once again back with my delightful mother. You might recognise this lady from the recent Villa videos. Uh, so, not only is a Man United fan going to this Man City tour, but we got a Villa fan as well. And my mum has come prepared. She's, as, as Villa, the Villa motto would suggest, prepared. She is prepared with a couple of facts about Man City. Right, in 2008, Man City was formed by Sheikh Mansour. And in 2021, Man City stole Jack Grealish. Oh, mum, mum, mum. Let's leave the facts until we get up to the ground. Right, back on that motorway. We're going to head up to the Etihad now. And yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this. It's going to be good. You're looking forward yep, to it, aren't you? Yeah, very much, yeah. We'll have no Jack Grealish talk. No. Uh, around uh, around the ground. It might get a bit, a bit nasty. <laughs> So uh, first impressions are really good. It's quite an unusual looking stadium from the outside, but my mum's actually raised a good point, and I'm not saying this in a, you know, in a by trying to find any means to slag Man City off, but parts of the outside of the ground kind of look a bit like a multi-story car park. That's the only, yeah. yeah. So here we go then guys, the Etihad Stadium, capacity 53,400 according to Wikipedia. Now don't listen to my mum, Man City weren't founded in 2008, they've been here since 2003 but they were founded in 1880, I think they were called like St Mark, something like that. From a distance, an incredibly aesthetically pleasing stadium, reminds me a little bit of the Emirates, the Arsenal Stadium. This is incredibly noisy because this is a bridge, this walkway. You've got Asda over there, the Golden Arches, Mackie D's over there, and of course, this glorious walkway to the Etihad Stadium. It's not quite the Samat Busby way, walk into the ground, but it, it, is, it is nice. You've got to give credit where credit's due. And please take what I say on this tour as tongue in cheek. It's merely banter, as I'm sure you're giving me banter for my awful accent in the comments below. The sun's shining, rain stopped, I'm feeling like this might well be one of the best tours yet. Those, those little pylon things in the distance, they're actually the entranceway into the stadium, but from a distance it does look like a multi-storey car park. That's one thing I have noticed. So I'm going to flip the camera around, we're going to head down this walkway and take a closer look at the beautiful, I've got to say it, a beautiful Etihad Stadium. Let's go and have a look. So 
one thing I've noticed is they've got loads of these really old school program stands all around the grounds. Now these are really old school. I'd, I'd be surprised if these weren't moved from Main Road. City fans, let me know in the comments below. And you've got such a modern, swanky looking stadium. And then you've got the really retro program stands. It's quite a contrast. Just a contrast I like. I will be very complimentary guys. I hope if we've got any United fans watching, I hope you don't get too annoyed that I am complimenting the blue rivals because that's what I do. I'm quite complimentary about the grounds I visit. At the moment, I might find some stuff I don't like, but very, very striking first impressions. As I mentioned, the little walkways, the multi-story car parks, as my mum's referred to, the, referred to them as, they're, they're unique in the fact that they've actually got all the, the facts, all the important, all the important bits of city's history actually around those spirals. Uh, we've seen Wolves with the walkway, the tunnel, with a bit of history there. We did some clips of Villa, some of their history around Villa Park on Sunday. And also you see that sort of thing at Goodison on the outside. So I always like those little details around the ground. United do it through the tunnel under um, so the Sir Bobby Charlton stand. You've got the Munich kind of display. It's nice. It creates that identity, that unique feel between each stadium. <coughs> An apology from Roy's Football Paradise. Over two weeks ago at the Manchester Derby, whilst in the Stretford end, I may have taken part in some petty chanting towards Erling Haaland. Although I did not partake in asking Mr. Haaland how his dad was, I did let slip a keynote. I might have only said it once, but kids, once is enough. We did try and contact Erlin, but to no success. We did, however, get hold of his dad, Alfie Harland. We asked him how he was. He said he's doing just fine. His son's a multi-millionaire. He gets to watch him every week and he takes great delight in the fact that Roy Keane, as part of his punditry role, has to watch him every week as well. Anyway, that's enough of that. I hope you accept my apology, and there will be no more mention of Roy Keane in this video. The walkway, the walk-in we just did, I'd be really intrigued as to how that looks on match day. Speaking of which, we're going to be back here in a couple of weeks' time, so we can do a bit of a comparison between that walk-in and the walk-in we do in two weeks' time as a film in this. So I might need to go undercover. All these Man City videos with a, a Man United title might be asking for trouble. But as I said, I'm going to be nice. Hopefully you guys can repay the favour. I've apologised. Hopefully my conscience is now clear. So I was right. As you can see in the distance there, in 1880 when Man City were founded, they were founded as a church team, as a church team, St. Mark's. Again, that's not quite unique to Man City. I'm pretty sure Everton uh, did the same thing. They've even got the church on Goodison. Um, but nice to know, nice to know. You've got 1880, they were founded. City won their first league title in 1937. So contrary to popular belief, contrary to what my mum said, they weren't founded in 2008. They enjoyed success many years ago. Probably the one I do need to mention, being in my circumstances of being a United fan. Over there, the 1999 fact over there. You can't see it, but up there, 1999, City are promoted from Division 2 after late goals triggered a shootout versus Gillingham and obviously City got promoted. We've done a little video on that. When Man United won the treble in 1999, Manchester City were struggling to get out of the old Division 2, the, the current League 1. It's all part of their history though. If you were to ask a City fan in person, they'd probably tell you that that moment was as monumental as some of the more recent moments where they're winning major silverware. So just because, a, uh, you know, just because the club doesn't necessarily win the Premier League throughout the year steadily, doesn't necessarily mean the club doesn't have history. Again, I'll throw some banter out there, but I'll give credit where credit's due. Obviously, my generation was spoiled with Manchester United in the 90s. But if I go back to my dad, when he started supporting Man U in the 70s, for example, I think United got relegated in the 73-74 season. So that's not to say that we were amazing back in the day. City have definitely had their ups and downs, though. Definitely one of the more heartbreaking moments. Personally, who you got over there? Sergio Aguero. 
says over there. Aguero. Hey, hey, hey. United, United, United. Whoop, whoop, whoop. It's obviously such an important moment for City, winning their first Premier League. I mean, it does look like he's carrying an axe, it's not a shirt. It doesn't really look like a shirt. It looks like kind of, kind of like a, a horror scene. I think something that often gets overlooked, especially over the last few months when everyone's celebrating, well, maybe not everyone, but City fans are celebrating their European treble, is the fact that Man City became the first men's team to win, to win all four domestic trophies in 2019. So before the treble, obviously you guys know this, 2019, it's not long ago. But I think sometimes that's like an underappreciated achievement. So they've done the all four domestic titles in a season. They've obviously done the treble recently. So the thing is, right, I did the Manchester Derby vlog. Obviously I got carried away being a United fan. But I think a lot of City fans are quick to give us Man United fans who don't live in Manchester stick. But unfortunately guys, when you look at all those recent achievements, you're gonna have in like 20 years time, a lot of people like me around Cheltenham. Already, I'm already seeing loads of Harlan Nine shirts. Didn't see a single City shirt when I first moved to Cheltenham like 10 years ago. They're coming guys. So these Glory fans, they're, they're just they're just developing so hold tight you're going to get a lot of people like me touring the Etihad in 20 years time you know representing the blue half of Manchester when's it starting then? I'm just going up to the hill again, I'll come back. That's what it's saying, man, we can't play a long cruise. Yeah, Some good views, get some good folks up today. Yeah. Have you, have you yeah. travelled far today? Have you? Gloucestershire, isn't it? Yeah, well, you're, you're Herefordshire, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, right, right. So you managed for a few days. Right. Get loads of folks up. <laughs> Now we moved in a year after the Commonwealth Games, so we had to basically make it bigger. 38,000 wasn't what we required. We Keith, <laughs> what do they need to know about what's happening in the future? Well, it's not exactly hot off the press here, but it's in, in the last couple of months uh, we've had uh, planning permission for granted for um, that end of the stadium. Okay. Yes, lots of pictures, guys, please. <laughs> Come on, birthday boy! I'm birthday boys brothers. Are you on here on June? By the way, yeah. 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 You okay? Yeah. Please ask him if you want to join us or trust me I'm not quite so uh fun fact. The actual pitch is lower than ground level. So actually ground level is where you see the Etihad Stadium. Black kind of rim around there. That is ground level. So they've dug down in order to get rid of that running track and to put more seats here basically. Fantastic midfield player. Mm -hmm. uh, probably equivalent to Kevin De Bruyne. The Kevin De Bruyne of the day. So I've just asked the tour guides, by digging down and getting rid of that running track, they managed to have an extra 10,000 seats over in the stadium. They, they had the stadium with planning permission in place. I just asked why West Ham can't get rid of their running track and do the same thing and dig down. Apparently West Ham don't have planning permission, which is why they can't do exactly as City have done. So can you see the badge on the floor at the end there? Yeah. The big badge that, that somebody's walking on it now. That's where the team bus arrives. Okay. The team get off the bus. It's usually Pep Guardiola off the team bus first. Lots of fans outside waiting for pictures. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm heading out to pitch side. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Lovely, isn't it? Yeah. So the, the ship is uh, not to our industrial heritage. It's going to port of Manchester. Yeah. So it was very important at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what it is. Grab a seat, guys. Oh, if you want to take the jerseys off. Yeah. 
Never did I think I'd be sat in early in Harlem's seat. So we've got my mum's, uh, my mum's uh, idol over here. <laughs> Wrong colour. So, quite a fancy changing room as you can see. Quite similar to the Liverpool changing room when we did the Anfield tour. A lot different than the Man United changing room. Championship season last year. All the champions. Guys, go on there and make all the stamps. Standard round of champions. Because in the mid-run, we have belong to us. And we fight, to take it again. Wow. So everybody gets. The first one about this. The same. He's trying to crack the code. <laughs> Getting very close. <laughs> So the players can keep any valuables in there if, if they want to, or if they're given to you just before the game. Now on a match day, I'll give you an example. What do you call Liverpool on that way? On a week on Saturday. Yeah, 12 12.30, I believe. Have a sit down guys, you can take the pictures inside if you like. But it won't look like this on a match day. So we've actually got 25 places in here, but there's only 20 players that will be in the squad on a match day. Now, if Pep is not playing Rico Lewis here, you can sit there. Now, underneath on a match day, you've got towel, you've got sliders. So the tour guides have just gave us a bit of a fun story. Apparently Kyle Walker has worn the same shin pads since he was 14 years old back in the Sheffield United days. So he's had the same shin pads for like 19 years. So superstitions and all that. And Phil Foden wears the number 47 because his granddad died at the age of 47. Obviously a young age to die. And again, Harland, Erlin, I'm very, very sorry, okay? Apology, hopefully accepted. Apparently Grealish wears really, really tiny shin pads as well because the Premier League regu regulations mean he has to wear shin pads, but obviously he wears the socks really low. So you can't go into the away changing room apparently, but it's basically exactly the same, but just a bland version. That's on the left and right is another restaurant. It's called the Tunnel Club Premier Restaurant. The food is out of this world. <laughs> Please welcome your new manager. Okay, so you've ju you just joined us. How do you fit? Where can you take this club? Probably back down to the third tier of English football, I think. We might be playing Gilligan, Gilligan again in the playoff finals, mm. uh, unfortunately. And on that bombshell, it's back to you in the studio. <laughs> So I'm still quite hung up on the fact that obviously from that black bit there, the Etihad Stadium, that is ground level. So everything along here is below ground level. Really baffling. Obviously 10,000 extra seats going, digging down, getting rid of that horrible running track. And then obviously they added a few more. Ah, fun fact as well, disclaimer, obviously City have released it publicly. But over this end of the stadium, they have been granted planning permission to extend that end of the stadium. So 
City will be going above the 60,000 capacity. They'll also be putting in to host a Champions League final game and obviously they're going to be hosting the Euros in 2028. So I think you need to be over 60,000 in capacity. But I, gotta, I mean, I've got to give credit where credit's due. Obviously, banter aside, it's a really nice stadium. It looks nice, even though, I mean, it feels a lot more modern than it actually is. 2002, for the Commonwealth Games, the stadium was built. They've been here since 2003, and it looks like a brand new stadium, to be fair. The whole lighting thing on the pitch is exactly the same as when we went to Anfield. I'm guessing this benefits the pitch somehow. So obviously this end was extended into a three-tier stand, as I mentioned. Over this end, they have put in for planning permission and they've been granted planning permission. So in the next few seasons, the Etihad is going to grow in size. Over here, the away dugout, of course, right there is where Eric Ten Hag is going to be sat soon as he uh, watches on as United scrape a 3-0 loss here at the Etihad. Nah, nah, fingers crossed. Hopefully. Hopefully Eric gets the win. Big screen over there in the, in the corner. Don't get that at Old Trafford, unfortunately. Uh, in, the, in the back of the changing room, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is all media throughout all the places. Hello to everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm absolutely yours. Most important to Maybe I'm not the right guy to answer this question and they can answer better than me. What do you want to see then here at City fans? Uh, we'd like to win the league another time. <coughs> Go for the record, which is four in a row. Fantastic. Right. I think winning two trebles in a row would top that. That would be unbelievable. That would be amazing. What do you reckon then, Beth? Thank you for your answer. Better than that is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I just confirmed that that wasn't me I swear on my life so if you're a subscriber of the channel obviously we're visiting all 20 Premier League stadiums and every time we visit a Premier League stadium we need to buy at least one item from the club shop over there again not ideal when you're a United fan but obviously we did it in Liverpool and we picked up that orangutan we've got the Hawaiian shirt from Villa the Hawaiian shirt from Everton I'm intrigued as to what the Man City store has to offer Maybe let's just try and find something cheap and cheerful, like a pencil or something. Let's go and have a look. Man City Club Shop. from the club shop a little bit unfortunate because a lady told me off for filming so you're not allowed to film in the club shop but we did get some sticky clips as you saw now I went for kind of minimal damage we've gone for this nice little pin set so it's only cost eight pounds it's only eight quid so it didn't cost much so can't pull any hair out over that speaking of which have you seen the state of this bloody hair I tried to do the Jack Grealish kind of look but obviously only Greenish could pull that off. But there we go, yeah. That's what we've got from the club shop. So then guys, back at Footy Paradise HQ. I just want to do a quick summary and I want to shout out Manchester City because it is a beautiful stadium. It serves its purpose and the fact that the other end, the smaller end, is being developed into almost like an entertainment complex according to the tour guides whereby the shop is being moved 
back into that end of the stadium and there's going to be all kinds of like bars and areas for fans to have a really good experience. Obviously hearing that, it sounds great, but also a part of me, my heart sinks because like when I went to the, the Anfield tour, it just reminds me of everything that Old Trafford isn't, everything that the Glazers haven't done over the past almost 20 years and where we need to be. Obviously these things don't directly impact the performance on the pitch. We can't keep blaming the Glazers, but obviously everything starts from the ground up or from the top, should I say, and filters down throughout the club. So City are doing things well. You can see why they are successful. And ladies and gents, obviously we're gonna be back there in two weeks time. So this is part one of a two part series. And I wanna give a shout out to another one ticked off because they're gonna be the sponsors for part two and they're responsible for sending Old Rye to the Etihad. They thought it'd be funny and I thought, you know what, it might be funny, but it won't be if I get beaten up. So we might, we might have to go a little bit steady. Hopefully City fans um, appreciate sort of the respect I showed the club and accept my apology for that Kino chant. All fans get carried away, I'm sorry. If you enjoyed the video guys, stick the thumbs up and I'll see you for that part two. See you soon.